The Mediterranean, home to old men and speedos and the ruins of once great empires. Rome built its empire on the waves of this salty sea and a thousand different empires tried to follow in its footsteps, but nobody really pulled it off. Let's talk about what would have been the coolest if it really got off the ground, the Norman Empire. But first, I'm planning to make a series out of this, so let me know if that interests you by liking and subscribing. So, who were these Normans? The Normans were basically Vikings. I will drink from your skull! They were originally from Scandinavia, but conquered northern France, giving it the name Normandy. In the 11th century, a large number of Normans swept to Italy as Viking mercenaries serving the Lombards in their war against the Byzantine Empire. But the Normans soon took advantage of the vacuum, using their horse-bound knights to found duchies and build castles of their own, with the Hauteville dynasty in the lead. The big kahuna of these Normans was Duke Robert Guscar, who distinguished himself in battle against the Pope, conquered Sicily from Islam, and forced the German Emperor to retreat from Rome. But like Logan Roy's kids, Robert's successors were pretty incompetent. Roman, you're a moron. In later years, this Norman kingdom decentralized because of their incompetence. But to give them some credit, the Hauteville's did rule Antioch after the First Crusade, so good for them. The next prominent Hauteville leader was Roger II, who lived from 1095 to 1154. His power was centered in Sicily. Attacked by two emperors and the Pope, Roger II repelled them all, captured the Pope, and centralized the territories of southern Italy under a new Kingdom of Sicily, with himself, of course, as the king. Roger II would then go on to also conquer Tunisia, forging the so-called Kingdom of Africa. Now, in real life, the Hauteville dynasty crumbled when King Tancred, who is best known for bullying the Byzantine Emperor and looking like a monkey, died in 1194 without a suitable heir. The Holy Roman Emperor invaded, captured his middle school age heir, King William III, castrated him, killed him, and then basically absorbed the Kingdom of Sicily into the HRE. But that wasn't inevitable. If the fledgling Kingdom of Sicily went down a different path, it could have carved itself the next great empire of the Mediterranean. So what could have gone differently though? Well, for one, the Kingdom of Sicily would have benefited from different leaders. Now it's impossible to say for sure, but for the sake of the scenario, let's say that good leadership comes from Roger IV, the Duke of Apulia. In real life, the Norman barons swept up Roger, who was still a kid, and demanded he be made king instead of Tancred's dad. But the kid promptly kicked the bucket, either because his dad kicked it for him or because he was unfortunately poked in the eye with a stray arrow. His younger brother then became heir, and the rest is history. But let's say that Roger IV wisely turns away in the face of these Viking shenanigans. He lives and, being the eldest son of King William, inherits the throne when his dad dies. With any luck, he'll succeed where his cousins didn't. The perfect opportunity for King Robert IV to make his mark is the Crusades. Many Crusaders were passing through Sicily in this time period to get to the Holy Land. If Roger IV was crafty, he could recruit these Crusaders to join him on the Normans' perennial harassment campaign against the Byzantine Empire, which at the time was led by the fanatically anti-Catholic Andronikos I Komnenos. The Normans and the Crusaders sack their way through Greece, take Constantinople, and claim it in the name of a pro-Norman Byzantine pretender who then probably dies in a tragic accident. Roger IV finally gets his parade, this time through the streets of Constantinople, with the Crusaders proclaiming him Latin Emperor in 1183. Now, maybe that sounds outlandish, but something similar happened in real life. In 1204, Crusaders sacked Constantinople and put in power Emperor Baldwin, who was from basically Belgium, crafting the new Catholic Latin Empire. There's no real reason why the Normans couldn't have done this instead. Okay, let's pick up the pace. The next century of Mediterranean history is one of war, peace, profit, and destruction. Emperor Roger IV is challenged by the Pope and the Holy Roman Emperor, but thanks to his political expertise and maybe some luck, the Normans win their wars against rivalrous powers and stabilize their station as a great power in the Mediterranean. The Normans even secure several loyal popes in Rome who recognize the Norman claim to Constantinople and imperial titles. Roger IV's successors go on to lead crusades against ascendant Muslim powers in the Holy Land, battle against Turks and Bulgars, and conquer Iberia from the Almohad Muslims. By 1340, Emperor Bohemond V of House Hauteville straddles the thrumming heart of the world. The Mediterranean is a Norman lake with the Hauteville standard on the sails of the fearsome Imperial Navy. Nearly every city within eyesight of the sea is occupied by men who pledge loyalty to the Emperor in Palermo whether locals, Normans, or mercenaries from far-off lands. The Pope is on good terms with the Emperor, though has repeatedly refused Bohemond's request to excommunicate the Holy Roman Emperor, who is gaining power in the north. 
Court drama focuses on the Italian merchant cities, which are late to pay their tributes again. In Constantinople, the Viceroy watches helplessly as violence once again breaks out between Greeks and Latins. In the Crusader states, Muslim peasants once again rally for a revolt against the Hauteville Prince of Jerusalem. While Emperor Bohemund V in Palermo is dominant, he is not supreme. The Norman Empire is politically and culturally decentralized. As a feudal lord, the emperor in Palermo is reluctant to extend his influence beyond his city, preferring to let the dukes, princes, and thematic governors call the shots. Local leaders are free to pursue development projects and produce their own wealth. Order is maintained through a feudal tributary system and the imperial navy. While this is beneficial in preventing a civil war, Palermo frequently must default on loans due to low tax income. Bohemund V has read the history of the old Roman emperors, though, and knows better than to let the soldiers of his empire have empty pockets and bellies. Culturally, the Norman Empire is a soup. Normans only represent a significant portion of the population in the rich cities of Sicily and the imperial colonies of Malta and Cyprus. While Italians, Sicilians, Arabs, Turks, Spaniards, and Greeks of various faiths make up the majority of the population. Norman culture has been blended and intermixed with local traditions. Norman courts often feature local arts and architecture, local languages and religions survive, and Norman elites increasingly dress and act like locals. Latin, the language, and the church is dominant, though is mixed and filtered into local interpretations. The emperor officially promotes Catholicism as the one true faith, though has a mixed record of actually enforcing it. The Crusades are just as horrible as real life, though in other cases, the imperial court is infused with religious and cultural diversity. Religious violence is frequent in some places, and infrequent in others. The Norman Empire is a diverse and glorious metropolitan amalgamation. These diverse cultures interact, intermarry even across faith lines sometimes, and trade. This has resulted in an upswell of artistic expression, philosophical thought, and interfaith discussion, all centered at the capital city of Palermo. Trade represents a significant part of the imperial economy. Lombards dominate as merchants hailing from Venice, Genoa, and Naples as they've been gifted trade rights in major cities across the Mediterranean. The imperial navy, meanwhile, does its best to protect traders loyal to Palermo from pirates while promoting piracy against rivalrous Muslims, Greeks, and Slavs, and often turning a blind eye to Italian pirates who enslave Catholics. Slavery is a major staple of Mediterranean life with vast slave markets across the Isles. As the year 1340 comes to a close, Emperor Bohemund V expects his greatest threat to come from the encroaching Turks threatening his lands in Anatolia. In January 1341, the Emperor receives reports of a terrible new sickness sweeping in from Norman-ruled Crimea. The Mediterranean's interconnectedness, the source of its great wealth and prosperity, will soon be turned against it. The Black Plague washes across the Mediterranean like a tsunami. Peasants, merchants, and noblemen all alike fall to the Black Death. Cities are depopulated, graveyards fill up, and rivers become clogged with bodies. In some, about half of the Norman Empire dies. This is too much for it to handle, it crumbles apart. But the Normans don't just disappear. Their cultural influence in the Mediterranean is deep and lasting, while House Hauteville continues to rule in Sicily for centuries to come. But what do you think? Could this Norman Empire have survived the Black Plague? What are some other empires that almost were? Comment below and don't forget to like and subscribe.